Chapter forty three of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day. Chapter one hundred and seventy three from the papyrus of nebsene vignette osiris the great god the lord of abtu the lord of transformations the prince of eternity seated in a shrine the deceased stands with hands raised in adoration before the god and the ground between them is covered with the bodies of birds and beasts which have been prepared for sacrifice. Text. The speeches of Horus to his divine father Osiris, when he entereth in to see him, and when he cometh forth from near the great art chamber, to look upon Ra as Unnefe, the lord of ta Tichset. Then doth each embrace the other at the pleasure of his coup, there in the underworld. A hymn of praise to Osiris, governor of those in the underworld, the great god, the lord of Abydos, the king of eternity, the prince of everlastingness, the holy god in Rastau, by the scribe Nebsene, who saith, I ascribe praise unto thee, O lord of the god, thou god one who livest upon right and truth behold i thy son horus come unto thee i have avenged thee and i have brought to thee mart even to the place where is the company of thy gods grant thou that i may have my being among those who are in thy following for i have overthrown all thy foes and i have established all those who are of thy substance upon the earth for ever and ever here follow forty declarations each of which is preceded by the words hail osiris i am thy son i have come and i have avenged thee o my father osiris i have come and i have overthrown for thee thine enemies i have come and i have done away with every evil thing which belongeth unto thee I have come, and I have slain for thee him that attacked thee. I have come, and I have sent forth mine arm against those who were hostile towards thee. I have come, and I have brought unto thee the fiends have set with their fetters upon them. I have come, and I have brought unto thee the land of the south, and I have united unto thee the land of the north. I have come, and I have established for thee divine offerings from the south and from the north. I have come, and I have ploughed for thee the fields. I have come, and I have filled for thee the canals with water. I have come, and I have hoed up for thee the ground. I have come, and I have built cisterns for thee. I have come, and I have gone round about the soil for thee. I have come, and I have made sacrificial victims of those who were hostile to thee. I have come, and I have made sacrifices unto thee of thine animals and victims for slaughter. I have come, and I have supplied thee with food in abundance of the creatures which are upon earth. I have come, and I have brought unto thee. I have come, and I have slain for thee. I have come, and I have smitten for thee emasculated beasts. I have come, and I have netted for thee birds and feathered fowl. I have come, and I have taken captive for thee thine enemies in their chains. I have come, and I have fettered for thee thine enemies with fetters. I have come, and I have brought for thee cool water from Abu Elephantine, wherewith thou mayest refresh thine heart. I have come, and I have brought unto thee herbs of every kind. I have come, and I have established for thee those who are of thy substance daily. 
I have come, and I have made thy cakes in the city of Pei of the red barley. I have come, and I have made thy ale in the city of Tepu of the white grain. I have come, and I have ploughed for thee wheat and barley in Saket Aru. I have come, and I have reaped it for thee therein. I have come, and I have glorified thee. I have come, and I have given to thee thy souls. I have come, and I have given to thee thy power. I have come, and I have given to thee thy... I have come, and I have given to thee thy... I have come, and I have given to thee thy terror. I have come, and I have given to thee thy victory. I have come, and I have given to thee thine eyes, which are the plumes on thy head. I have come, and I have given to thee Isis and Nephthys, that they may establish thee. I have come, and I have filled for thee the eye of Horus with oil or unguent. I have come, and I have brought unto thee the eye of Horus, whereby thy face shall be destroyed. Chapter 174 From the Papyrus of Mutetep Vignette The deceased standing with her back towards a door from which she has just come forth. Text the chapter of causing the coup to come forth from the great door. Mut hetepet triumphant saith, Thy son hath offered up for thee a sacrifice, and the divine mighty ones tremble when they look upon the slaughtering knife which is in thy hand, when thou comest forth from the tuat. Homage to thee, O God, saw, the God Seb hath created thee, and the company of the gods have given birth unto thee. Horus resteth upon his eye, and the god Tem resteth upon his years, and the gods of the east and of the west rest upon the mighty one who hath come into existence within thy hand. A god hath been born now that I have been born. I see and I have sight. I have my existence. I am lifted up upon my place. I have done what hath been decreed. I hate slumber. I have endowed with might the feeble one. He that dwelleth in the city of Netet hath made cakes for me in the city of Pei, and I have received my form in Anu, for it is Horus who hath commanded what shall be done for his father, the Lord of Winds, and the God set quaketh. He hath raised me up and Tem hath raised me up. O, oh, I am the Mighty One, and I have come forth from between the thighs of the company of the gods. I have been conceived by Saket, and by Shez Kentet, and I have been brought forth at the door of the star sept Sothis, the foremost one, who with long strides bringeth along the celestial path of Ra day by day, I have come to my habitation as prince of the north and south, and I rise, or I am crowned, in the gate. Hail, thou of the double plumes, who art called by the name of my shepes. I am the lotus which shineth in the land of purity, and which hath received me, and which maketh my abode at the nostrils of the great form. I have come into the lake of flame, and I have placed right and truth in the place of sin. I am the watcher of the Sasharu garments, and the watcher of the Urias, on the night of the flood of the Great One. I rise like Nefertem, who is the lotus at the nostrils of Ra, when he cometh forth from the horizon each day, and the gods are purified at the sight of the lady of the house, Mut Hetepet who is triumphant before the cars, and who gathereth together hearts for sa -u -er, whom the god sa amenti -ra holdeth. I have come upon my seat before the cars, and I have gathered together hearts for sa -er, and I have my being as Sa, whom Ra, the god of Amenti, holdeth, and the Tachach implement is with me. I recite the mighty words which are in the heart on the festival of the Ansi garment, and I am Sa Amenti Ra, the strong of heart, 
within the hidden chamber of Nu. Chapter 175 From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette The deceased and his wife standing, with hands raised in adoration, before the god Thoth, who is seated upon a pylon-shaped throne, and has the emblem of life upon his knees. Text. The chapter of not dying a second time. Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant, saith, Hail, Thoth! What is it that hath happened unto the divine children of Nut? They have done battle, they have upheld strife, they have done evil, they have created the fiends, they have made slaughter, they have caused trouble. In truth, in all their doings, the mighty have worked against the weak. Grant, O might of Thoth, that that which the god Tem hath decreed may be done. And thou regardest not evil, nor art thou provoked to anger, when they bring their years to confusion, and throng in, and push to disturb their mouths. For in all that they have done unto thee, they have worked iniquity in secret i am thy writing palate o thos and i have brought unto thee thine ink jar i am not of those who work iniquity in their secret places let not evil happen unto me saith osiris the scribe ani hail to moon what manner of land is this into which i have come it hath not water it hath not air it is depth unfathomable it is black as the blackest night and men wander helplessly therein in it a man may not live in quietness of heart nor may the longings of love be satisfied therein but let the state of the shining ones be given unto me instead of water and air and the satisfying of the longings of love and let quietness of heart be given unto me instead of cakes and ale the god Tem hath decreed that I shall see thy face, and that I shall not suffer from the things which pain thee. May every god transmit unto thee his throne for millions of years. Thy throne hath descended unto thy son Horus, and the god Tem hath decreed that his course shall be among the holy princes. In truth he shall rule over thy throne, and he shall be heir at the throne of the dweller, in the lake of double fire in truth it hath been decreed that in me he shall see his likeness and that my face shall look upon the face of the lord tem how long then have i to live it is decreed that thou shalt live for millions of millions of years a life of millions of years may it be granted unto me that i pass on unto the holy princes for indeed I am doing away with all the wrong which I did from the time when this earth came into being, from Nu, when it sprang from the watery abyss, even as it was in the days of old. I am fate, or time, and Osiris, and I have made my transformations into the likeness of diverse serpents. Man knoweth not, and the gods cannot behold the twofold beauty which I have made for Osiris who is greater than all the gods. I have given unto him the region of the dead, and verily his son Horus is seated upon the throne of the dweller in the lake of double fire as his heir. I have made him to have his throne in the boat of millions of years. Horus established upon his throne among his friends and all that belonged unto him. Verily the soul of Set which is greater than all the gods, hath departed. May it be granted that I bind his soul in the divine boat at my will, and that he may have fear of the divine body. O oh, my father Osiris, thou hast done for me that which my father Ra did for thee. May I abide upon the earth lastingly. May I keep possession of my throne. May my air be strong. May my tomb and my friends who are upon earth flourish. May my enemies be given over to destruction and to the shackles of the goddess Serf. I am thy son, and Ra is my father. For me, likewise, 
thou hast made life strength and health horus is established upon his throne grant thou that the days of my life may come unto worship and honour the remains of a much longer version of this chapter have been found in the papyrus of a scribe of the offerings of the king of the north and south called ra and from these we may see that the happiness of the deceased in the underworld was more fully described therein no connected sense can however be given to this version for the beginnings and ends of the lines of the text of the chapter are wanting almost throughout from the rubric we learn that the chapter was to be recited over a figure of horus made of lapis lazuli which was to be laid upon the neck of the deceased and that the performance of this ceremony was believed to be most efficacious in securing important benefits for the dead chapter one hundred and seventy six from the papyrus of nu vignette the chapter is without vignette text the chapter of not dying a second time the osiris nu the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief triumphant saith that which i abominate is the land of the east let me not enter into the torture-chamber let there not be done unto me any of those things which the gods hold in abomination for behold i have passed as a pure being through the mesket chamber and let the god nebeft check grant unto me his glorious power on the day of burial in the presence of the lord of things rubric if the deceased know this chapter he shall become like a perfect crew in the underworld chapter one hundred and seventy seven from the papyrus of nebsene vignette the deceased standing upright pure water is being poured out before him and offerings of linen garments are being made unto him the chapter of raising up the ku and of making the soul to live in the underworld the scribe nebsene the draughtsman in the temple of ptah the lord of piety who is in the favour of his god saith hail nut nut who castest thy father to earth and settest horus behind him his wings grow like those of a hawk and his plumes like those of him who seeth his soul hath been brought unto him he is filled with words of magical power and his place is decreed for him opposite to the stars of the heaven for behold thou art a star of newt by thyself thou seest the scribe nebsene the lord of piety in happiness and giving his commands unto the crews and behold the divine power or prince is not among them and thy is not among them unless thou art among them thou seest the chief nebsene the scribe and draughtsman of the temple of ptah in the form of a soul who hath the horns of the cow smamet and an unsa the black hail children of sarat beket who have suckled milk from the four you are poo cows horus of the blue eyes cometh unto you protect ye horus of the red eyes who is sick let not his soul be turned back let his offerings be brought unto him let the things which are for his benefit be carried to him and let them come upon the shoulder over the west this only one advanceth to thee the god speaketh thy words the gods make thy name to be triumphant before the gods and the company of the gods distinguish thee with their hands the god of the field of the gods speaketh and thou gainest the power over the door of cars in the horizon they unbolt for thee their doors for they have a favour unto thee 
and thou gainest power over their shrines the god seb and his company of gods enter in and they come forth lifting on high their faces and they look upon thee in the presence of the great god amsu thy head thy head i make to stand up thy head for thee and thou hast power thereover his head diminisheth behind thee but thy head shall not diminish and thou shalt not be destroyed and thou shalt do what thou hast to do before men and before the gods chapter one hundred and seventy eight from the papyrus of nevsene vignette this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of raising up the dead body of giving sight to the eyes of gaining power over the ears of establishing the head and of providing the face with the power of protection the osiris the scribe nebsene the draughtsman of the temple of ptah the lord of piety says the eye of horus is presented unto thee and it feedeth thee with the food of offering hail ye who make the labourers to rejoice and to raise up the heart and purify the body who have eaten the eye of horus thou olive tree in anno destroy ye what evil there is in the body of osiris nebsene the scribe and draughtsman in the temple of ptah o osiris let him not suffer thirst before his god let him suffer neither hunger nor thirst and let the god cars carry them away and let him do away with his hunger o thou that fillest o thou that fillest hearts o chiefs who dispense cakes and ale o ye who have charge of the water flood command ye that cakes and ale be given unto the osiris nebsene even as ra himself commanded this thing and moreover ra hath commanded those who are over the abundance of the year to take handfuls of wheat and barley and to give them to him for his cakes for behold he is a great bull these shall ye give to the osiris nebsene o guardian of the five cakes in the divine house three cakes are in heaven before ra and two are upon earth before the company of the gods may he burst through nu may he see may he see o ra be gracious unto the scribe nebsene this day be gracious the scribe nebsene is as a lord of piety according to the command of shu and isis and he hath been united unto the piety of happiness before his god may the gods give cakes and ale unto the scribe nebsene and may they prepare for him all good and pure things this happy day things for journeying and travelling things of the eye of horus things of the boat and all things which should enter into the sight of the god thou shalt have power over the water and thou shalt advance to the table of offerings having cakes and four measures of water the eye of horus hath ordered these things for the scribe nebsene and the god shu hath ordered the means of subsistence for him both cakes and ale watch o judges of the form of thoth watch him that lieth in death wake up o thou that dwellest in kenset grant thou offerings in the presence of thoth the mighty god who cometh forth from hapi that is the nile and of apuat who cometh forth from assert for the mouth of nebsene the scribe and designer of the temple of ptah is pure the company of the gods offer incense to the scribe nebsene and his mouth is pure and his tongue which is therein is right and true that which the scribe nebsene abominateth is filth and he hath freed himself therefrom 
even as Set freed himself from it in the city of Rehu, and he hath set out with Thoth for heaven. O oh, ye who have delivered the scribe Nebsene along with yourselves, let him eat of that whereof ye eat, let him drink of that whereof ye drink, let him sit down upon that whereon ye sit, let him be strong in the strength wherein ye are strong, let him sail about where ye sail about. The scribe Nebsene hath drawn the net together in the region of Aru, and he hath running water in Sekethetep, and his offerings are among those of the god. The water of the scribe Nebsene is the wine of Ra, and Nebsene goeth round about heaven, and travelleth therein like unto Thoth. It is an abomination unto the scribe Nebsene to suffer hunger and not to eat, and it is an abomination unto him to be thirsty and not to drink. But sepulchral meals have been given unto him by the Lord of Eternity, who hath ordered these things for him. The scribe Nebsene was conceived in the night, and was brought forth in the daylight, and those who are in the following of Ra, the divine ancestors, adore him. The scribe Nebsene was conceived in Nu, and was brought forth in Nu, and he hath come, and hath brought to you what he hath found of that which the eye of Horus hath shed upon the branches of the then tree. The governor of those in Amente cometh to him, and bringeth to him the divine food and offerings of Horus, the governor of temples, and upon that whereon he doth live, the scribe Nebsene liveth also, and of that whereof he drinketh, doth the scribe Nebsene, the designer of the temple of Batar, drink also, and facing his offerings of cakes and ale, is a haunch of meat also. Osiris, the scribe Nebsene is triumphant, and he is favoured of Anubis, who is upon his hill. Hail, scribe Nebsene, thou hast the form wherein thou hadst thine existence upon earth, and thou livest and renewest thy youth each day. Thy face is uncovered, and thou seest the lord of the horizon, who giveth to thee sepulchral meals in thy hour and in thy season of night. Horus hath avenged thee, and he hath destroyed the jawbones of thine enemies. He hath shut in the door of violence at the mouth of his fortress. Hail, scribe Nebsene, thou hast no enemies in het -ur, and the scales balanced when thou wert weighed therein, and the hall wherein they were, belong to Osiris, the lord of offerings of Amentet, and thou shalt enter in at will, and thou shalt see the great god in his form, and life shall be given to thy nostrils, and thou shalt triumph over thine enemies. Hail, scribe Nebsene, what thou abominatest is iniquity. The divine load of creation hath made peace with thee on the night of silencing the weeping, and sweet life, whereupon Thoth resteth, hath been given unto thee from the mouth of the company of the gods, and thou dost triumph over thine enemies, O scribe Nebsene. Thy mother Nut spreadeth herself over thee in her name of Shetet Pet, and she maketh thee to be a follower of the great god, and to be without enemies, and she delivereth thee from every evil thing in her name of Kenemet Urt, the divine, mighty form, who dwelleth among her children, O scribe Nebsene. Hail, chiefs of the hours, ancestors of Ra, make ye a way for the scribe Nebsene, the lord of piety, and let him pass within the circle of Osiris, the lord of life of the two lands, who liveth for ever, and let the scribe Nebsene, the draughtsman in the temple of Ptah, 
the lord of piety the happy one be in the following of nefertem the lotus at the nostrils of ra in the presence of the gods and let him see ra for ever chapter one hundred and seventy nine this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of advancing from yesterday and of coming forth by day whereby he and his members shall be provided with food the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief nu triumphant the son of the overseer of the palace amen hetep triumphant saith let my speech of yesterday be given unto me i come daily i have come forth from the god of creation i am sepes coming forth from his tree and i am nun coming forth from his might i am the lord of the uraret crown and the god neheb kau i am tesha who avengeth his eye i died yesterday but i come to-day the mighty lady who is the guardian of the door hath made a way for me i come forth by day against mine enemy and i have gained the mastery over him he hath been given over unto me and he shall not be delivered out of my hand and he shall come to an end before me in the presence of the great divine sovereign chiefs who are in the underworld the first great rank hath been given unto me by him along with the shade and form of the living gods and i have made my path mine enemy hath been brought unto me and he hath been given unto me and he shall not be delivered out of my hand the things which concern me have been ended in the presence of the divine sovereign chiefs of osiris who is clothed in his apparel and behold the governor of those in amente i am the lord of redness on the day of transformations i am the lord of knives and injury shall not be done unto me i have made my path i am the scribe who writeth down the odorous things which are in the sweet-smelling incense and the things which belong to the mighty ruddy one have been brought to me and the mighty ruddy one hath been given to me i have come forth by day against my enemy i have brought him along i have gained the power over him he hath been given unto me and he shall not be delivered out of my hand he hath come to an end beneath me in the presence of the divine sovereign chiefs and i eat him in the great field on the altar of ua i have gained the mastery over him as sekhet the great lady i am the lord of transformations for i have the transformations of every god and they go round about in me chapter one hundred and eighty from a papyrus at paris vignette the deceased kneeling in supplication before three gods text the chapter of coming forth by day of praising ra in amentet of ascribing praise unto those who dwell in the tuat of opening up a path for the perfect coup in the underworld of causing him to walk of making long his footsteps of going in and coming forth from the underworld and of perfecting transformations like a living soul the osiris triumphant saith ra setteth as osiris with all the diadems of the divine cause and of the gods of amentet he is the one divine form the hidden one of the tuat the holy soul at the head of amentet um nefer whose duration of life is for ever and for ever words of praise are addressed to thee o osiris in the tuat and thy son horus hath satisfaction in thee and he hath spoken unto thee the decree of words thou makest him to rise upon those who dwell in the tuat like a mighty divine star unto whom the things which are his have been brought in the tuat thou travellest through it o son of ra 
and comest forth like ten words of praise are addressed unto thee by those who dwell in the tuat which is the throne chamber dear to thy majesty the king the prince of Aukert, the mighty ruler who is crowned with the Ureret crown the great god whose seat is hidden the lord and weigher of words and the sovereign of his divine chiefs and words of praise are addressed unto thee by those who dwell in the tuat and they have satisfaction in thee and words of praise are addressed unto thee by those who dwell in the tuat and the divine beings who weep pluck out their hair for thee and they smite their hands together and they praise thee and they cry out before thee and they weep for thee and they rejoice that thy soul hath glorified thy dead body the souls of ra in amentet are exalted and in the zone of the tuat the souls cry out in their songs of exultation unto the souls of ra who dwelleth therein the body and souls of the god chench dwell in the tuat and his divine soul resteth therein hail osiris i am a servant of thy temple and one who dwelleth within thy divine house and thou utterest with command the words of the decree grant thou that i may rise like a luminary among the denizens of the tuat and like a mighty star unto whom in the tuat the things which are his have been brought let me journey through it like the son of ra and let me come forth as ten let me have rest in the tuat let me gain the mastery over the darkness let me enter therein let me come forth therefrom let thy hands receive me o ta tionem and let the hetepu gods lift me up o stretch ye out your hands to me for i even i know your names lead ye me along praise ye me o hetepu gods with your praises for ra rejoiceth over the praises which are offered unto me even as he doth over those which are offered unto osiris i have established for you your offerings and ye have obtained the mastery over your oblations even as ra hath commanded me to do i am the god mehiu and i am his heir upon the earth and i have made my path o oh, ye hetepu gods grant ye that i may enter into the tuat and let me make a way into the beautiful amentet i have established the sceptre of the god sa and the nemes crown for the god whose name is hidden look ye then o hetepu gods and ye gods who are the guides of the tuat and grant that i may receive my glorious might and let me rise like a luminary above his hidden place and deliver ye me from the deadly stakes of those who are chained thereunto chain ye me not unto your deadly stakes and give ye me not over to the habitation of the fiends who slay i am the heir of osiris and i have received as nemes crown in the tuat look ye upon me then and let me rise like a luminary who have come forth from your members and let me come into being like my divine father who is worshipped look ye upon me then and rejoice ye in me and grant that i may rise up and that i may come into being like him whose transformations were destroyed open ye a way unto my divine soul o ye who stand upon your places grant ye that i may rest in the beautiful amentet and decree ye for me a seat in front of you open out ye to me your path and draw back for me the bolts of your doors behold o ra as thou art the guide of this earth so let the divine souls be my guide and let me follow after the god i am he who guardeth his own pylon and i am led along 
by those who lead i am he who keepeth ward over his doors and who setteth the gods in their places i am he who dwelleth upon his standard within the tuat i am the god hembi the guardian of the lands of the gods i am the boundaries of the tuat i am the god hetepe in aukert my offerings have been made in amentet by the divine souls who dwell in the gods i am the god meha nutira i am the hidden benu bird i enter in as he resteth in the tuat and i come forth as he resteth in the tuat i am the lord of the celestial abodes and i journey through the night sky after Ra. my offerings are in heaven in the field of Ra, and my sepulchral meals are on earth in the field of aru i travel through the tuat like the beings who are with Ra, and i weigh words like the god thoth i stretch myself at my desire i run forward with my strides in my spiritual form of hidden qualities and my transformations are those of the double god horus set i am the president of the food of the gods of the tuat and i give the sepulchral offerings of the khus i am the god of the mighty heart who smiteth his enemies hail ye gods and khus the ancestors of ra who follow after the divine soul which he hath lead ye me along as ye lead him along and do ye who are the guides of ra and who are leaders dwelling in the upper heaven guide me for i am like unto the divine and holy soul who is in amentet end of chapter forty three Chapter forty four of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day. Chapter one hundred and eighty one from the papyrus of Kenna. Vignette The deceased kneeling in adoration before three gods who are seated before a door. Behind are a lion headed and a vulture headed god each of whom has a serpent above his head. Text The chapter of entering in to the divine sovereign chiefs of Osiris, and to the gods who are guides in the Tuat, and to those who keep ward over their gates, and to those who are heralds of their halls, and to those who are the porters of the doors and pylons of Amentet, and of making the transformations like a living soul, and of praising Osiris, and of becoming the prince of the divine sovereign chiefs. The Osiris, Kenna, triumphant, sayers, Homage to thee, O governor of Amentet, Unnefer, lord of Tartechiset, O thou who art diademed like Ra, verily I come to see thee, and to rejoice at thy beauties. His disc is thy disc, his rays of light are thy rays of light, his aurorate crown is thy aurorate crown, his majesty is thy majesty, his risings are thy risings, his beauties are thy beauties. The terror which he inspireth is the terror 
which thou inspirest his odour is thy odour his hall is thy hall his seat is thy seat his throne is thy throne his air is thy air his ornaments are thy ornaments his decree is thy decree his hidden place is thy hidden place his things are thy things his knowledge or powers is thy knowledge the attributes of greatness which are his are thine the power which protecteth him protecteth thee he dieth not and thou diest not he is not triumphed over by his enemies and thou art not triumphed over by thine enemies no evil thing whatsoever hath happened unto him and no evil thing whatsoever shall happen unto thee for ever and for ever homage to thee o osiris son of nut lord of the two horns whose adept crown is exalted may the overwrought crown be given unto him along with sovereignty before the company of the gods may the god temu make terror of him to exist in the hearts of men and women and gods and coos and the dead may dominium be given unto him in anu heliopolis may he be mighty of transformations in tatu mendes may he be the lord greatly feared in the aati may he be mighty in victory in restau may he be the lord who is remembered with gladness in the great house may he have manifold risings like a luminary in abtu abydos may triumph be given unto him in the presence of the company of the gods may he gain the victory over the mighty powers may the fear of him be made to go throughout the earth and may the princes stand up upon their stations before the sovereign of the gods of the tuat the mighty form of heaven the prince of the living ones the king of those who are therein and the glorifier of thousands in ker abba the denizens of heaven rejoice in him who is the lord of the chosen offerings in the mansions above a meat offering is made unto him in the city hetka patah memphis and the things of the night are prepared for him in sekem letopolis behold o mighty god thou great one of twofold strength thy son horus avengeth thee he doeth away with every evil thing whatsoever that belongeth to thee he bindeth up in order for thee thy person he gathereth together for thee thy members he collecteth for thee thy bones he bringeth to thee thy thou art raised up then o osiris i have given unto thee thy hand and i make thee to stand up alive for ever and ever the god seb directeth thy mouth the great company of the gods protecteth thee and they accompany thee unto the door of the gate of the tuat thy mother nut placeth her hands behind thee she giveth thee strength and she reneweth the power which protecteth thee birth thy two sisters isis and nephthys come unto thee and they unite thee unto life and strength and health and thy heart rejoiceth before them they in thee through love of thee and they load thy hands for thee 
with things of all kinds. All the gods present unto thee provisions, and behold, they praise thee for ever. Happy art thou, O Osiris, for thou art crowned, and art endowed with strength, and art glorious, and thine attributes are established for thee. Thy face is like that of Anpu. Ra rejoiceth in thee, and he maketh himself to be a brother to thy beautiful person. Thou sittest upon thy throne, the god Seb maketh a libation for thee, and that which thou wishest to receive is in thy hands in Amentet. Thou sailest over the celestial regions each day. Thy mother, Nut, maketh thee to go forth on thy way, and thou settest in light in Amentet, in the boat of Ra each day, along with Horus, who loveth thee. The protecting strength of Ra guardeth thee, the words of might of Thoth are behind thee, and Isis maketh strength to follow after thy person. I have come to thee, O Lord of Tartashet, Osiris, governor of those who are in Amentet, O Nefer, whose twofold existence is for ever and for ever. My heart is right and true, my hands are pure. I have brought things unto their divine Lord, and offerings unto the God who made them. I have come, and I have advanced to your cities. I have done that which was good upon earth. I have slain thine enemies for thee, like sacrificial oxen. I have slaughtered for thee thy adversaries, and I have made them to fall down upon their faces before thee. I am pure, even as thou art pure. I have made pure for thee thy festival, and I have upon thine altar to thy soul, and to thy form, and to the gods, and to the goddesses who are in thy train. Rubric If this chapter be known by the deceased, things of evil shall not gain the mastery over him, and he shall not be turned back from any of the doors of Amentet but he shall go in and come out, and cakes and ale and all beautiful things shall be given unto him in the presence of those who dwell in the Tuat. Chapter 182 From the Papyrus of Mut Hetet Vignette The deceased lying upon a bier within a funeral chest or coffer Beneath the bier are three vases. At the foot stand Isis, Harpy, and Tuamata, and at the head Nephthys, Mestha, and Kebsenuf. In the upper and lower registers are a number of seated and standing, man-headed and animal-headed deities, who hold in their hands snakes lizards and knives text the book of establishing osiris firmly of giving air to the still heart whilst thoth repulseth the foes of osiris who cometh there in his transformations and is protected and made strong and guarded in the underworld by the operation of the will of Thoth himself, and Shu setteth upon him each day. Thoth saith, I am Thoth, the perfect scribe, whose hands are pure, the lord of the two horns, who maketh iniquity to be destroyed, the scribe of right and truth, who abominateth sin. Behold, he is the writing reed of the god neb the lord of laws, who giveth forth the speech of wisdom and understanding, 
whose words have dominion over the two lands. I am Thoth, the Lord of right and truth, who trieth the right and the truth for the gods, the judge of words in their essence, whose words triumph over violence. I have scattered the darkness, I have driven away the whirlwind and the storm, and I have given the pleasant breeze of the north wind unto Osiris Unnefer, as he came forth from the womb of her who gave him birth. I have made Ra to set as Osiris, and Osiris setteth as Ra setteth. I have made him to enter into the hidden habitation to vivify the heart of the still heart, the holy soul, who dwelleth in Amentet, and to shout cries of joy unto the still heart of Nefer, the son of Nut. I am Thoth, the favoured one of Ra, the lord of might, who bringeth to a prosperous end that which he doeth, the mighty one of enchantments, who is in the boat of millions of years, the lord of laws, the subduer of the two lands, whose words of might gave strength to her that gave him birth, whose word doeth away with opposition and fighting, and who performeth the will of Ra in his shrine. I am Thoth, who made Osiris to triumph over his enemies. I am Thoth, who issueth the decree at dawn, whose sight followeth on again after his overthrow at his season, the guide of heaven and earth and the underworld, and the creator of the life of all nations and peoples. I gave air unto him that was in the hidden place by means of the might of the magical words of my utterance, and Osiris triumpheth over his enemies. I came unto thee, O Lord of Tartachesa, Osiris, bull of Ament, and thou wert strengthened for ever. I set everlastingness as a protection for thy members, and I came unto thee, having protection in my hand, and I guarded thee with strength during the course of each and every day. Protection and life were behind this god, protection and life were behind this god, and his car was glorified with power. The king of the Tuat, the prince of Amentet, the victorious conqueror of heaven, hath the Atep crown firmly established upon him. He is diademed with the white crown, and he graspeth the crook and the whip unto him, the great one of souls, the mighty one of the Eurite crown, every god gathereth together, and love for him who is Unnefe, and whose existence is for everlasting, and all eternity goeth through their bodies. Homage to thee, O governor of those who are in Amente, who makest mortals to be born again, who renewest thy youth. Thou comest, who dwellest in thy season, and who art more beautiful than thy son Horus hath avenged thee. The rank or dignity of Tem hath been conferred upon the O Unnefer. Thou art raised up, O bull of Amentet, Thou art established, yea, established, in the body of Nut, who uniteth herself unto thee, and who cometh forth with thee. Thy heart established upon that which supporteth it, and thy breast is as it was formerly. Thy nose is firmly fixed with life and power. Thou livest, and thou art renewed, and thou makest thyself young like Ra each and every day. Mighty 
mighty is osiris in victory and he is firmly established with life i am thoth and i have pacified horus and i have quieted the two divine combatants in their season of storm i have come and i have washed the ruddy one i have quieted the stormy one and i have filled him with all manner of evil things i am thoth and i have made the things of the night in sekem letopolis i am thoth and i have come daily into the cities of pe and tebu i have led along the offerings and oblations i have given cakes with lavish hand to the coos i have protected the shoulder of osiris i have embalmed him i have made sweet his odour even as is that of the beautiful god i am thoth and i have come each day into the city of ker abba i have tied the cordage and i have set in good order the markent boat and i have brought it from the east to the west i am more exalted upon my standard than any god in my name of he whose face is exalted i have opened fair things in my name of apuat that is opener of the road and i have ascribed praise and done homage unto osiris um nefer whose existence is for ever and for ever End of chapter 44。45 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison the chapters of coming forth by day chapter one hundred and eighty three from the papyrus of hu nefer vignette a the deceased and his wife standing with hands raised in adoration b thoth ibis headed standing upright and presenting symbols of strength and life a text the osiris hu nefer the overseer of the palace of the lord of the two lands triumphant praiseth osiris and acclaimeth him and doeth homage unto un nefer and boweth to the ground before the lord of tartichset and exalteth those who are upon his sand saying i have come unto thee o son of nut osiris prince of everlastingness i am in the following of the god Thoth, and i have rejoiced at everything which he hath done for thee he hath brought unto thee sweet air for thy nose and life and strength to thy beautiful face and the north wind which cometh forth from Tem for thy nostrils, O Lord of Tartacheset. He hath made the god Shu to shine upon thy body. He hath illumined thy path with rays of splendour. He hath destroyed for thee all the evil defects which belong to thy members by the magical power of the words of his utterance. He hath made the two Horus brethren to be at peace for thee. He hath destroyed the storm wind and the hurricane. He hath made the two combatants to be gracious unto thee, and the two lands to be at peace before thee. He hath put away the wrath which was in their hearts, and each hath become reconciled unto his brother. 
thy son horus is triumphant in the presence of the whole company of the gods the sovereignty over the world hath been given unto him and his dominion is in the uttermost parts of the earth the throne of the god seb hath been adjudged unto him along with the rank which hath been founded by the god temu and which hath been established by decrees in the chamber of books and hath been inscribed upon an iron tablet according to the command of thy father ptah tanen when he sat upon the great throne he hath set his brother upon that which the god shu beareth up to stretch out the waters over the mountains and to make to spring up that which groweth upon the hills and the grain which shooteth upon the earth and he giveth increase by water and by land god celestial and god terrestrial transfer themselves to the service of thy son horus and they follow him into his hall where a decree is passed that he shall be lord over them and they perform it straightway thy heart rejoiceth o lord of the gods thy heart rejoiceth greatly egypt and the red land are at peace and they serve humbly under thy sovereign power the temples are established upon their own lands cities and gnomes possess firmly the property which they have in their names and we will make to thee the divine offerings which we are bound to make and offer sacrifices in thy name for ever acclamations are made in thy name libations are poured out to thy car sepulchral meals are brought unto thee by the coos who are in thy following and water is sprinkled upon the offerings upon both sides of the souls of the dead in this land every design which hath been ordered for thee according to his that is ra's commands in the beginning hath been perfected now therefore o son of nut thou art diademed as neb ev the chair is diademed at his rising thou livest thou art established thou renewest thy youth and thou art true and perfect thy father ra maketh strong thy members and the company of the gods make acclamations unto thee the goddess isis is with thee and she never leaveth thee thou art not overthrown by thine enemies the lords of all lands praise thy beauties even as they praise ra when he riseth at the beginning of each day thou risest up like an exalted one upon thy standard thy beauties exalt the face of man and make long his stride i have given unto thee the sovereignty of thy father seb and the goddess mut thy mother who gave birth to the gods brought thee forth as the firstborn of five gods and created thy beauties and fashioned thy members thou art established as king the white crown is upon thy head and thou hast grasped in thy hands the crook and the whip whilst thou wert in the womb and hadst not as yet come forth therefrom upon the earth thou wert crowned lord of the two lands and the atef crown of ra was upon thy brow the gods come unto thee bowing low to the ground and they hold thee in fear they retreat and depart when they see thee with the terror of ra and the victory of thy majesty is in their hearts life is with thee and offerings of meat and drink follow thee and that which is thy due is offered up before thy face grant thou that i may follow in the train of thy majesty even as i did upon earth 
let my soul be called into the presence, and let it be found by the side of the lords of right and truth. I have come into the city of God, the region which existed in primeval time, with my soul, and with my double, and with my ku, to dwell in this land. The God thereof is the Lord of right and truth. He is the Lord of the chafau food of the gods, and he is most holy. His land draweth unto itself every other land. The south cometh sailing down the river thereto, and the north steered thither by winds, cometh daily to make festival therein, according to the command of the god thereof, who is the lord of peace therein. And doth he not say, The happiness thereof is a care unto me? The god who dwelleth therein worketh right and truth and to him that doeth these things he giveth old age, and to him that followeth after them rank and honour, and at length he attaineth unto a happy funeral and burial in Tartishet. I have come unto thee, and my hands hold right and truth, and my heart hath no crafty wickedness therein. I offer up before thee that which is thy due, and I know that whereon thou livest. I have not committed any sin in the land, and I have defrauded no man of that which is his. I am Thoth, the perfect scribe, whose hands are pure. I am the Lord of purity, the destroyer of evil, the scribe of right and truth, and that which I abominate is sin. Behold me, for I am the writing reed of the god nebert the lord of laws, who giveth forth the word of wisdom and understanding, and whose speech hath dominion over the two lands. I am Thoth, the lord of right and truth, who maketh the feeble one to gain the victory, and who avengeth the wretched and the oppressed on him that wrongeth him. I have scattered the darkness, I have driven away the storm, and I have brought the wind to Unnefa, the beautiful breeze of the north wind, even as it came forth from the womb of his mother. I have caused him to enter into the hidden abode to vivify the heart of the still heart, Unnefa, the son of Nut, Horus, triumphant. Chapter 184 From the Papyrus of Ua Vignette The deceased standing upright before Osiris, who wears the Atep crown, and holds in his hands the whip and crook, emblems of sovereignty and dominion. Text The chapter of being nigh unto Osiris the Osiris Ua, the overseer of the estates of Amen, triumphant, saith. Chapter 185 From the Papyrus of Sutim Vignette Osiris, at the head of Abtu, the great god, prince of eternity and governor of Amentet, enthroned within a shrine. He holds in his hands the whip and crook, emblems of sovereignty and dominion. Before him, with hands raised in adoration, stand the deceased and his wife, Hent Netaru, the lady of the house, the singing woman of Amen, triumphant. Text the giving of praises unto Osiris, and paying homage unto the Lord of Eternity, and propitiating the God in his wealth, and declaring the right and truth, the Lord of which is unknown. The Osiris Sutim, the libationer and president of the altar chamber in the Act 
the president of the scribes of the temple of Amen triumphant, saith, Homage to thee, O thou holy God, thou mighty and beneficent being, thou prince of eternity, who dwellest in thy abode in the sectet boat, thou whose risings are manifold in the atet boat, to thee are praises rendered in heaven and upon earth, peoples and nations exalt thee and the majesty of the terror of him is in the hearts of men and coos and the dead thy soul is in tetet mendes and the terror of thee is in sutan henen thou settest the visible emblems of thyself in anu and the greatness of thy transformations in the double place of purification I have come unto thee, and my heart hath right and truth therein, and there is neither craft nor guile in my breast. Grant thou that I may have my being among the living, and that I may sail down and up the river among those who are in thy following. Chapter 186 From the Papyrus of Ani vignette the goddess hathor in the form of a hippopotamus wearing upon her head a disc and horns in her right hand she holds an unidentified object and in her left the emblem of life before her are offerings and behind her the cow meurit who may be identified with hathor looks forth from the funeral mountain at the foot of the mountain is the tomb, and in the foreground grows a group of flowering plants. Text Hathor, Lady of Amentet, Mighty Dweller in the Funeral Mountain, Lady of ta Tachisat, Daughter or Eye of Ra, Dweller before him, Beautiful of face, in the boat of millions of years, The habitation or seat of peace, creator of law in the boat of the favoured ones. In the versions of this chapter given by Neville, the deceased, sometimes accompanied by his wife, is seen standing in adoration before the hippopotamus and cow goddesses. The texts which occupy the upper portions of the scenes are longer than that given in the papyrus of Ani, a part of which is manifestly corrupt and though all of them are more or less fragmentary, we learn from them that this chapter is entitled The Praise of Hathor, the Mistress of Amentet, and the Paying of Homage to me -Urit. After reciting the titles of Hathor, the deceased describes his devotion to the gods, and the works which he did for them whilst he was upon earth, and having stated that he is innocent of offence, he entreats the goddess that he may have his existence among her divine followers, and that suitable offerings of all kinds may be made unto him in Amentet. Chapter 187 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette This chapter is without a vignette in the Papyrus of Nu text the chapter of entering in unto the company of the gods the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant sir homage to you o company of the gods of ra i have come before you i am in the following of ra i have made my way and i have passed in among you let not my hand be repulsed in whatsoever i do this day Chapter 188 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette This chapter is without a vignette in the Papyrus of Nu. Text The chapter of the going in of the soul, to build an abode, and to come forth by day in human form. The overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, Nu, triumphant, the son of the overseer of the palace, Amen Hetep, triumphant, saith, Come in peace, 
thou hast a coup, enter thou in peace into the divine Uchat. Behold, thou hast a coup together with a soul, bar, and a shade, carbet, to look thereupon. May it behold me when I am judged, in whatever place it may be, with my attributes and with my form and with my faculties of mind and with all my attributes ordered and perfect even as a soul which is provided with all things and is divine may i shine like ra in his divine splendour in the temple of and may my soul and my shade come to me upon their legs from the place where i am judged and behold me may i stand up and sit down and enter into the house of his body which behold hath become one of the starry gods of osiris who travel by day and journey by night and celebrate the festivals chapter one hundred and eighty nine from the papyrus of nu this chapter is without a vignette in the papyrus of nu Text the chapter of not letting a man perform a journey being hungry and of not letting him eat filth the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief knew triumphant the son of the overseer of the palace amen hetep triumphant saith the things which are an abomination unto me the things which are an abomination unto me i will not eat what i abominate is filth and I will not eat thereof, in the place of the sepulchral cakes which are offered unto the cars. Let me be not thrown down upon it, let it not light upon my body, let it not enter into my fingers, and let it not join itself unto my toes. Thou shalt live, then, upon that which the gods and the Khus decree for me in this place, and upon that which is brought unto thee there. Let me live upon the seven cakes, which shall be brought unto me four cakes before Horus, and three cakes before Thoth. The gods and the Khus shall say unto me, What manner of food wouldst thou have given unto thee? And I reply, Let me eat my food beneath the sycamore tree of the goddess Hathor, and let my times be among the divine beings who have alighted thereon. Let me have the power to order my own fields in Tatu, and my own growing crops in Anu. Let me live upon bread made of white barley, and let my beer be made from red grain, and may the persons of my father and mother be given unto me as guardians of my door, and for the ordering of the divine territory. Let me be sound and strong, let me have a large room, let me make a way, let me have my seat wherever I please, like a living soul and let me never be kept in restraint by mine enemy. That which is an abomination unto me is filth, and I will not eat thereof. Let me never pass over filth and offal in Anu, but let it depart from me. I am the bull who ordereth his habitation. I fly like the mighty one, I cackle like the smen goose, and I alight upon the beautiful sycamore which standeth in the lake of Akeb. I come forth, and I alight upon it. He who alighteth there in the form of the great God shall not be driven away therefrom. The things which I abominate I will not eat. The things which I abominate, the things which I abominate are filth and offal, and I will not eat thereof. The things which are an abomination unto my car are filth and offal, they shall never enter into my body they shall never come into my hands, and I will never tread upon them with my sandals. O, oh, send ye not forth against me foul water, harm ye not me with the rod, give ye not unto me, snatch ye me not away from the edge of your deep cisterns, and let me not depart from you being overthrown. The divine Alchemo beings of the god Penheseb shall say unto me, Upon what wilt thou live in this land, whither thou art going, and wherein thou wouldst be glorious? And I reply, I will live upon the cakes made of black grain, and upon ale made of white grain, and upon four cakes in Sakatetep, which is more than the food of any or every god. Moreover, I have four loaves of bread, 
during the course of each and every day, besides four loaves in anu, which is more than the food of any and every garden. And the divine, how came beings, that the god Penheseb shall say unto me, What hast thou brought to eat in that holy furrow, on that day when I received my offerings with anti unguent And I reply, I will not eat thereof, it shall not come into my hands, and I will not tread thereon with my sandals. And the divine Alchemu, beings of the god Penhezeb, shall say unto me, Upon what wilt thou live in this land, whither thou art going, and wherein thou wouldst be glorious? And I reply, I will live upon the seven cakes which shall be brought, four in the temple of Horus, and three in the temple of Thoth. And the divine Alchemu beings that the god Penhezeb shall say unto me, Who then shall bring them unto thee? And I reply, The divine associate of the temples of the Erhechati goddess of Anu. And they say, Where wilt thou eat them? And I reply, Beneath the beams of the beautiful ark to which hymns are sung as it is borne along, thither shall I be taken and the divine Alchemu beings of the god Penhezeb shall say unto me, Wouldst thou live then upon the things which belong to another every day? And I reply, I will myself plough the fields of my estate in Saket Haru. And the divine Alchemu beings of the god Penhezeb shall say unto me, Who will protect them for thee? And I reply, The two divine daughters of the divine king of the north, besides those who belong to them. And the divine Alchemu beings of the god Penhezeb shall say unto me, Who will plough them for thee? And I reply, The divine chiefs who dwell among the gods of heaven and the gods of earth, the treading down of the earth shall be done for me by the cow goddess Hapiu, who dwelleth in the city of Sao, and the harvest shall be reaped for me by Suti, the Lord of heaven and of earth. Hail, ye who turn back the blossoms upon yourselves, ye whose transgressions are done away with, whose faces are holy. Behold, I am with the divine beings of Set at the mountain of Bacau, and I sit down along with the spiritual bodies who are perfect on the side of the lake of Osiris to rejoice my heart. Shall not I make the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, new, triumphant, to know life. Chapter 190 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette This chapter is without a vignette in the Papyrus of Nu. Text The Book of Making Perfect the Coup Within Ra, of Making Him to Gain the Mastery Before Tem, of Magnifying Him Before Osiris, of making him to be powerful before the governor of Amentet, and of causing him to be mighty before the company of the gods. Rubric This book shall be recited on the first day of the month, on the festival of the Six, on the festival of Uak, on the festival of Thoth, on the birthday of Osiris, on the festival of Sekri and on the festival of the night of Hakeb, It will enable a man to pass through the hidden places of the Tuat, and to penetrate the secret habitations of Nitekeft, to break through mountains, and to open up a way through the secret valleys which are unknown. This chapter shall preserve or embalm the coup. It shall make broad his steps, it shall give him power to walk, it shall destroy the deafness of his face, and it shall enable him to make a way for his face with the god. When thou recitest this chapter, thou shalt not let any man whatsoever see thee, except him that is indeed dear to thy heart, and the priest who readeth the service Kerf Hebe. Thou shalt not let any other person see thee, and no servant shall come outside the chamber wherein thou art. Thou shalt recite this chapter inside a chamber, lined with cloth, decorated, 
literally shot with stars throughout the soul of every coup that is the deceased for whom this book hath been recited shall come forth among the living he himself shall come forth by day and he shall gain the mastery among the gods and shall not be repulsed by them and these gods shall revolve round about him and they shall acknowledge literally recognize him and indeed he shall be as the divine one among them and he shall make thee to know the transformations which shall come to him in the light this book is indeed a very great mystery and thou shalt never allow those who dwell in the papyrus swamps of the delta that is ignorant folk or any person whatsoever to see it end of chapter forty five end of the book of the dead translated by e a wallace budge